Greetings and welcome back, YouTube math community, or should I say family, or even cult, whatever you guys are okay with calling this. Come to think of it, as you dig deeper into math and physics and STEM in general, it becomes quite difficult to actually make friends. And the one or one and a half friends that you do have are just as obsessed with math and physics and STEM as you are. Which is cool, but that's also an indicator of something that if you want more friends, your best bet is to probably join a cult where, you know, everyone is obsessed with math and then, you know, you can take part in cult meetings and all that and socialize, whatever that means. Anyway, we have more important things to deal with right now, including the solution development for this very cool integral. We have the integral from negative to positive pi by 4 of sine to the 2k minus 1 of theta plus cosine to the 2k minus 1 of theta divided by sine to the 2k of theta plus cosine to the 2k of theta whole thing squared where k is a positive integer okay cool it definitely looks like something so it's gonna be fun to evaluate so here we go the first thing i'd like to do is to factor out the cosine terms upstairs and downstairs and the reason for that is we'll get some tangents which are quite nice to work with so we have the integral from negative to positive pi by 4 of cosine to the 2k minus 1 of theta times tangent to the 2k minus 1 of theta terribly sorry about that plus 1 divided by cosine to the 2k of theta times tangent to the 2k of theta plus 1 whole thing squared d theta. So we have some cancellation of cosine functions happening here. In fact, the only cosine function we're left with is the multiplicative of the inverse, uh, the multiplicative inverse of the cosine function up top in the numerator. That is, of course, the secant function. So we have integral from negative to positive pi by 4 of secant square theta times 1 plus tangent to the 2k minus 1 of theta divided by 1 plus tangent to the 2k of theta squared d theta. And now we're well placed to make a nice substitution here. We're going to let tangent theta equal x, which implies that secant squared theta d theta equals dx. And of course, as x approaches negative pi by 4, uh, as theta approaches negative pi by 4, that is, x, which is tangent theta, approaches negative 1, and we have the corresponding case for positive pi by 4, if you get what I mean. So we have i now being the integral from negative to positive 1 of what exactly do we have? Well, the differential element secant square theta d theta turns into dx, and we're left with 1 plus x to the 2k minus 1 divided by 1 plus x to the 2k. The whole thing is squared, of course, which is quite nice, I guess. But the thing to note here is that we're integrating from negative to positive 1. So it could be useful to split the integral into one integral from negative 1 to 0 and another from, one, uh, from 0 to 1, that is of 1 plus x to the 2k minus 1 divided by 1 plus x to the 2k squared dx. And for the integral from negative to positive 1, we could perform the transformation that is x going to negative x so that we have the integral from 1 to 0 of 1 minus x to the 2k minus 1 because that's an odd power divided by 1 plus x to the 2k, even power, so yeah, we still have a positive sign there, whole thing squared. The dx turns into negative dx, but we get rid of that by switching up the limits of integration. Okay, cool. And we still have this integral from 0 to 1. And we have some interesting looking terms in the numerators. So we could expand the square for the numerators and add them up using the linearity of the integration operator. So we have 1 plus x to the 4k minus 2 uh, minus 2 times x to the 2k minus 1 
plus 1 plus x to the 4k minus 2 plus 2x to the 2k minus 1, where there's some nice cancellation taking place. The denominator is, of course, the common denominator of 1 plus x to the 2k squared. And now we're left with twice the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 plus x to the 4k minus 2 divided by 1 plus x to the 2k squared dx. One thing we could do now is introduce another transformation, this time letting x to the 2k equal t, which means that x here is just t to the 1 by 2k, which implies that dx is 1 over 2k times t to the 1 by 2k minus 1 dt, and the limits are clearly not bothered, so we have i now equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 1, of 1 plus, what do we have here? We would have t to the 4k minus 2 divided by 2k, so 2k here, 2k here, divided by 1 plus t whole thing squared. Then we have the differential element transforming into 1 by 2k times t to the 1 by 2k minus 1 dt. So there's some cancellation happening, terribly sorry about that. There's some cancellation happening straight away. And we have integral 0 to 1 of 1 plus, wait, we're multiplying out by t, right? So we have t to the 1 by 2k minus 1 plus t to the, okay, so we have 2 minus 1 over k plus 1 over 2k minus 1. And now for my struggle with basic arithmetic, 2 minus 1 is, of course, 1 last time I checked, and then we have 1 by k, negative 1 by k plus half of 1 by k. So that results in negative 1 by 2k. Okay, cool, I survived. And now what? This looks like a pretty fascinating structure. And we could invoke a form of the beta function that's less common, but looks extremely cool. So let's see if it applies here. The beta function with complex arguments u and v equals integral 0 to 1 of t to the u minus 1 plus t to the v minus 1 divided by 1 plus t to the u plus v dt. So let's see here. u minus 1 equal to 1 over 2k minus 1 means that u is definitely 1 over 2k. And then we have v minus 1 equal to 1 minus 1 over 2k which implies that v is just 2 minus 1 over 2k. And adding these two up yields 2. So yeah, everything fits the bill quite nicely. So we have i equal to the beta function evaluated at 1 by 2k and 2 minus 1 by 2k. And now for the relation between the beta and the gamma functions, we know that this equals gamma of the first argument times gamma of the second argument divided by gamma of the sum of the arguments, which is, oh, something I have written wrong. So we have cancellation, again, always welcome. So we have i equal to gamma one over two k times gamma two minus one over two k divided by gamma two, which is one factorial, which is one. And now let's see if we can Correct Matt's 505 in the comments for the fact that he has missed a factor of 1 over k. I'm sure many people have already commented that. Thank you very much. And we have 1 over k everywhere. Hell yeah. And now let's see if we can simplify this somehow. Well, it turns out that the simplification is actually quite simple. So we have this thing here, which is, of course, gamma 1 plus 1 minus 1 by 2k. So this thing by the recursion formula should equal 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2k times gamma 1 minus 1 by 2k, which is pretty convenient because now we have i equal to 1 by k times 1 minus 1 by 2k times gamma 1 by 2k times gamma 1 minus 1 by 2k and now we can invoke possibly my favorite tool, that's Euler's beautiful reflection formula, by which we know that this thing equals pi divided by the sine of pi times the argument, which is of course one over two k in this case. So we have i equal to 
let's see, we got 2k minus 1 divided by 2k squared, correct, times pi divided by the sine of pi by 2k, which is a pretty cool looking result indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.